Namaste to everyone. Welcome to the morning session. Yesterday we had um, given a point for reflecting and that point for reflection was try to see if you are making effort for that which is unchanging like relationship feelings in relationship feelings that are naturally acceptable like trust, respect and so on. Or are we making effort for those things that keep changing, that will not stay with you, like earning more money, having more information. Right? These are things that are specific for that time, for that place, for particular people. And it may change. You will notice this in your own life also that there are some things that stay and a reference of that is available to us in the form of the natural acceptance. It doesn't change with time, place, person. But then there are other things that keep changing, whether it be related to the body, you know, the world outside, what we see, whether it be related to my own imagination also, because you will find that right now you may be thinking of something. The very next moment, the thought has gone somewhere else. It has changed. So all this is changing a lot. But in the midst of all this, there is something that is unchanging. And we get a glimpse of that through the natural acceptance. So like feelings that are naturally acceptable. We may not be able to have those feelings all the time right now, but we do have the potential within us to have this in continuity. Whatever is naturally acceptable to us, it may seem like very far off when we are not able to be that way. What we want to be, we aren't that at this time. So it may seem like difficult. But at least if we can see that that is something desirable for us, that is something that we want, then we can make effort and see how much is possible and how much is not. But you can take it as a proposal that this potential is there in each and every one of us. If we make effort, if we pay attention to it, it is possible to get there. Get there in the sense you don't have to go anywhere. It is already there. All these activities, these higher activities are within you. But when, you, when we are not conscious about what we are thinking, what we are feeling, it is as if this imagination is driving us rather than us driving the imagination. It's a very big difference, isn't it? If the imagination seems to be driving us, that means we are getting all this stuff from outside and we are being driven by it, then you feel powerless, helpless. And you feel, what can I do? I can't do anything. You feel very narrow, very small. But as you keep exploring and becoming aware of these higher activities within you, you will notice your vision expanding. You will notice that you now feel more in charge because you can have, you can decide what kind of feeling you want to have, what you should think, what you want to think about, what you, you know, how to go about things. Then it, it doesn't happen that you suddenly shout at somebody and you think, I couldn't do it, I couldn't help it. So many times we say, I didn't want to be angry, but it just happened. So does it just happen or perhaps we are not paying enough attention there. So all that potential is there within us to be able to have access to these higher activities because they are already there. You don't have to find them somewhere. You don't have to bring them into you. They are already there. It's just that we are not able to see them right now because so much of conflict and 
so much of disturbance is there in the lower activities that it's clouding all of this. And so it's like, you know, when there are very dense clouds, then even though the sun is there, we can't see the sunlight because of those dense clouds. So same way, the higher activities, they are already there within us. It's just that we may not be able to see them because of all this dense confusion, conflict within the imagination. So more and more we settle down this, the more we are able to see. But if we keep saying, I must not think, I must not think, it's not going to happen. Then we are just going round and round in that B2 block and just trying to analyze, trying to think about it. That will not work. So like we said yesterday, we need to refer to the natural acceptance again and again. And slowly, this starts opening up. The higher activities become visible to us or we become conscious to them. And then they can start guiding the lower activities. So yesterday, that question that we asked, where are we making the effort largely? Something that is going to change or something that is constant is there. If you can, you know, if you'd like to share whatever you could, um, you know, draw from this yesterday, we'd like to take your sharing. How we have differentiated this into Gati Kriya and Stiti Kriya or dynamic or state because yeah. contemplation also happens dynamically or comparing also happens dynamically and um, it's determination is something which uh, I mean yeah at one instance it happens it changes that one Sankalpa gets fulfilled we do another but then determination is kind of um, we decide and then it's a static thing. So can we, can you throw more light on that? Yeah. Yes. So coming to your first question <clears throat> that you are seeing things in retrospect and it seems to be going very slow. Yeah. 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 So this you'll find is the norm. Okay. That's not something very um, out of the way. You will find this happens with most people. That's how things proceed. If you ever notice, you know, I, we can ask this in the chat. How many of you have ever noticed that <coughs> many a time a child, when the child is small, as an infant, before they start crawling, many times you may notice that the child, before they start crawling forward, they first rock in one place, then it looks like they're moving backwards. Yes, yes. And then I've... they start moving forward. Have you noticed that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <I've>, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So that kind of thing, that is the normal process. Most children, of course, there will be some who don't crawl at all. And they go directly from <laughs> sitting to standing and walking. Yeah. But then most children will go through, most infants will go through this step. So... I'm getting in the chat also. Some people are sharing that, yes, they are able to see this. So, um, this is the normal process. What happens is that initially, I mean, if you think back, there was a time when you didn't even know what is happening inside. We weren't mm. paying attention at all. We weren't bothered also. <laughs> Yes. Not everything is fine outside. Let's just keep going outside. And if we are unhappy, okay, that's part of life. We just accepted so many things. You know, we yeah. cannot have a relationship without the, without the arguments and the fights. And happiness and unhappiness are two sides of a coin. And you just have to live with it. And so many things we told ourselves. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> without knowing what you can or cannot do, what is your potential, all of that. Now that you're paying attention, so, you know, for so many journeys, so many lifetimes, we may have been looking outside. Yes. Now, suddenly we have started looking inside. It will take time, of course. 
certainly it will take time and this thing about what we keep saying no that if you're running full speed in one direction now you want to reverse and go in the other direction full speed definitely it requires a lot of effort and time isn't it yes yes so you slow down you have to stop you have to turn around then you have to start in the other direction and slowly it will build up momentum and finally you can run at full speed in the other direction. Yes. So it, it has to take its own time. That is part of it. Like that seed that you put in the ground. It will go down, you know, the root will form and go down deep and deep and deep and then the shoot comes up. That's the normal process. We plant the seed and we want the shoot to come out quickly. It will not happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So this is part of the process. Coming to, you know, what to do to enhance this. As my need is becoming more and more to see this, that I'm seeing that this is important for me, I start paying more and more attention. It's true that in the morning, a um, lot of times... In the morning, what happens is we make this plan. We write down, okay, this, 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 I will do today. And a lot of times, maybe we may be very enthusiastic. Because in the mind, we can think many, many things. <laughs> but when it comes to the yeah. body, yeah. there are some limitations. So sometimes you will find, and many times this may happen with some of us, that I had 10 things on the list, but I could only get seven done or six done out of the 10. And at the end of the day, I'm sort of discouraged that, see, I planned, but somewhere I forgot about this, I forgot about that. So what we can do is put reminders for ourselves. And somebody had shared in this uh, morning session itself, one of the people who had joined earlier and was doing the exercises, he said that what he does is when he makes that list of 10 or whatever number mm. and he covers some and the remaining two, three, four are left. Next day, he puts those at the top of the list and then makes the others points so that mm. those get done. But I mean, these are ways of planning and all that you can figure yeah. out what best will work for you. Yeah. The important thing is that if we didn't plan, perhaps you would have not done even one or two. Absolutely. Absolutely. That I am realizing. I mean. yes. <laughs> so the fact that we plan, it's just that our expectation was higher than perhaps what we could manage. Isn't it? Yes. So the problem is not with the planning. The problem is with the expectation part. Certainly it is good to plan a little bit more than we think we can do. But then we also have to see that if I had not planned, I wouldn't have gotten anything done. So at the end of the day, what are we looking at? What didn't happen or what has happened? Yes. So if we see what has happened, we see, oh, we have done a lot. Isn't it? Yes. But at the same time, of course, it is important to get the other stuff done. So we put it in our Next tomorrow and try to do it then. We don't forget about it, but we keep at it. So same way within us also, we do want to pay attention. We may forget. Mm. So we make that list in the morning for things to do and all of that. Somewhere we can put a reminder for ourselves mm. to look within. So simple thing like we always talk about, you, know, you can put a reminder on your phone. These days, phone is everything. <laughs> Extended. It is your wallet, it is your watch, it is everything. So always extended the phone body. is with you. Huh? It's an extended body part. Yes, <laughs> it has become like that. <laughs> yeah. So you can uh, certainly you know, put a reminder for yourself. Like I keep giving this example. When I was in practice, I used to be working as a pediatrician. And I would be seeing patients all day. So in the morning, I would decide something that, okay, today I will not have irritation or anger within me. Supposing that is what I have decided today. 
And of course, yeah. in the day-to-day -day activities, you tend to get caught up and busy and all that. So I would put a reminder on my phone. Every one hour, you know, that yeah. alarm would go. Whether I have a patient sitting in the chamber, whether I am discussing yeah. something with somebody, whether it is in the middle of a talk, whatever it may be. It was a reminder to me. Others didn't understand the significance, but it was a reminder to me that in the last one hour, was I composed, not just outside, but inside? Mm. Or was I having irritation inside? Mm. So what I found was that if you do something like this, every hour there is a reminder. But at that time, you're looking at it retrospectively. In mm. the last one hour, what I did. I mean, I'm just giving this as an example. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody should do this. Yeah. But to begin with, it worked because it was reminding me that, okay, check in the last one hour. Then in, then I start doing something else. Again, in one hour, the alarm goes. And now I'm looking at the last hour, what happened. So I found that within two, three, four days, I didn't need the, the, this thing yeah. anymore, that reminder. Because now I was all the time paying attention inside. It has become a habit. It, mm. Yeah. Hmm. So that practice makes it better and better, like you said. So those are some possibilities. Some people yeah. put, you know, those sticky notes where yes. they drive, where they brush their teeth, whatever it may be. Some form of external reminder till that reminder comes within. How does it come within? You, you notice, you know, how yeah. you become calm and comfortable. That becomes your motivational reminder. Because you want to be in that state all the time. Yeah. So it, when in the point of decision, mm -hmm. I mean, it becomes currently it's the state is kid, kuch decide karna and I'm into two minds. Then, then it comes. Then I refer to, mm -hmm. you know, ke, ha, matlab, um, yes. To, this is also very true. This is how yeah. it is in the beginning, right? Yeah. Because you have many thoughts. Yes. Now to organize those thoughts, you'll notice this in everything that we do. Yes. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I do mm. this? Should I do that? Gee. Those are thoughts. <laughs> now in those thoughts, I'm trying to find that natural, natural acceptance. So it may be a little hard mm. because many thoughts could be naturally acceptable. Mm. Isn't it? Yeah. Something may be more applicable at this time not so yeah. applicable at another time for instance simple thing like should i eat rice should i eat wheat yeah in a certain season when it is summer rice is cooling i might prefer rice if it yeah. is winter time it is you know cold yeah. wheat is eating for the body so i might prefer wheat now if i try to ask myself what is naturally acceptable out of these two? I won't be able to get the answer. But if I look at the purpose behind yes. it. Yes. What is the purpose? Is it nurturing for the body? Is it not nurturing? Then I get the answer. So either yeah. we look at the purpose or yes. we have to step back a little bit and look at the feeling. But the feeling is more subtle than the thought. Uh, yeah. So it may take some time to be able to see that. As we go to the subtler and subtler activities, it becomes a little bit harder to see because they are more subtle and we are used to looking at the gross outside. So slowly we develop that ability to be able to see subtler and subtler and subtler activities. So yes. it's okay to begin with the thoughts, look at the purpose. Okay. okay. And ask that question. Yeah. 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 I had one question regards the static activity or dynamic ah, yes, activity. Yeah. You... About the static and the dynamic activity. Static activity, I wouldn't worry too much about the words, but important to see, you know, what it is within us. So if we start from the lowest activity, it might be easiest to see. Selecting and tasting. Where tasting is the static activity, and the dynamic activity is selecting. So you might think, you know, when I'm tasting something, why is it static? So you eat something, you develop a taste for it. 
or you are able to taste it. Supposing the first time I eat some, you know, you can think of your favorite dish or whatever, something that you enjoyed the taste of when you ate it first time. Now, when you have tasted it, you liked the taste, isn't it? Now, at some point, supposing you come across a choice, what to eat, you remember that taste within you and you select, okay, today I want to have that. I really enjoyed it that time. Let me have it today. So on the basis of the taste or the memory of the taste or whatever you want to call it, on the basis of that taste that was already there within you, now you are looking at what to select at this time. At another moment, you may select something else based on something else. But right now, on the basis of that taste, you are selecting this. Tomorrow, you might think, okay, that's too sweet. Out of the salty ones, let me see what taste I liked before I select that. So many times we'll see this is going on constantly within us, but we are not aware of it. So I see a phone. There is an ad on TV and I see a phone. Although nobody watches TV anymore. Okay, on the internet, I see an ad for a phone. And I like the look of the phone and I like, you know, now tomorrow, my friend says, let's go out and I want to go to one of these shops to buy something. So we go there. I'm looking for that phone that I saw in the ad. I already have developed a taste for it. That taste is there within me. On the basis of that, I may select, okay, let me take this today. Let me buy this phone. So like that, we'll find there is something one activity is there within us that is already there on the basis of which we do some selection. So what you are selecting at that time, that is the dynamic one. What was there within you, that is, that is the static one. Similarly, comparing and analyzing. So for two things, that comparison will already be there within you. Like, Um, you buy something, you go to the store and you buy some fruit or something like that. Now, on the basis of, you know, whatever, it could be, you know, um, say this is of this much price and that is of that much price or something like that. Now, you already know what that means within you that way of comparing things. Now you analyze, at this time, should I take more of this or should I take more of that? It could be related to price. It could be related to what is healthier for the body. It could be related to what is convenient for me to carry at this time. So those two things that we are comparing, that point of comparison, that is already there within me. No? If I lift, if I have to lift a heavy bag of 5 kgs, how it will be? If I have to lift a bag of 1 kg, how it will be? On the basis of that, if I have to walk down from my house to that place, it's going to be heavy to carry. Let me take 1 kg. So you are analyzing all this on the basis of some comparison, a point of comparison that is already there within you. So that is you know, one is the static and on the basis of that, you use the dynamic. At that moment, you decide something, isn't it? So similarly, if you look at imaging, now the contemplation part, you can see that it is part of the B1 block. That means a lot of times we don't, we are not aware of it. Until we make effort, we may not be able to see this part. So now our imaging is floating around without guidance from the static part within. 
Now our imaging, which is very important, the desire, the feeling, this is being decided by stuff from outside. So our preconditionings, our sensation, that is driving all our um, sort of, um, you know, what I'm feeling right now, what I'm wanting to get from the outside, all of this, that desire, actually at the root, if you see, my desire is to be happy. But I'm not seeing that this possibility is there from within. So I'm looking outside. So I'm trying to get things from outside. And I think, okay, a new car will make me happy. A new phone will make me happy. Maybe a big house will make me happy. And all of this I'm getting from outside. You know, somebody may have said, you know, before you get married, you should have a house, you should have a stable job, all of this. So now that preconditioning is there that I should have all this, this, this before I get married. You see that many times people are saying that no, these days. So now this, um, this imaging is on being run by on the basis of something from outside. But as I contemplate, and you'll notice that at the base of the any desire is some feeling. This feeling is being driven by the outside. So I see everybody as separate. So I may have a feeling you know, of relationship for one person. I may have a feeling of opposition for another person and so on. Once I this contemplation, activity of contemplation opens up within me, then I'm able to see my relationship with everybody. And I'm able to see my role in the relationship, my participation. Now that drives my desire. Can you see that? So I am able to contemplate on something that is there already. Actually, the relationship is there. I was not able to see it. Now I am able to see it. Now I can see it within me. On the basis of that, I take a decision for the feeling. And I take a decision about whatever my desire is associated with that feeling, right? So if I can see the relationship, I may have a desire to be with that feeling of relationship, live with that feeling of relationship with the other. So now my thought process is along with that. How to be, um, how to live in relationship with the other person, what I can do, how maybe, how should I express all those things, you know, should I do namaste or should I bow down? All this will come in the thought. Then on the basis of whatever, maybe depending on that time, that place, I may decide that, you know, if it's an elder person, I may choose to um, touch the feet. If it is a younger person, I may choose to bless the child with the, you know, my hand on the head, something like that. So all of these you can see. Similarly, on the higher activity, beyond the contemplation, now I'm able to see all the units, their harmony. On the basis of that, I determine that now, you know, this harmony that is there in every unit, let me make my desire, my, um, uh, you know, the thoughts and all in line with this harmony. Ultimately, when you get to realization, you are actually able to see the space, the subtlest activity. So you see the basis for all this relationship. Uh, you see that every unit is in coexistence. Now, on the basis of that, what is the authentication? Authentication meaning? Now, not that just the expression of how it will be, but Essentially, now with all of this, all my lower activities, that they should be in line with this. That is what it is. So on the basis of that, what you already saw within you, now you decide what to do with that at this time. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, but we'll be doing, you know, important thing is to try to see within ourselves. And we are not discussing too much of the higher activities right now because 
we'll go step by step as we go to the higher activities okay so this big chart we've seen it perhaps in the um, workshop but important thing here is to see that you know all of this uh, you know we we've uh, read about or at least at the level of information we have this about the existence that the existence is in the form of coexistence it is in the form of units being submerged in space so i'll just go over it quickly the units you will find the units are limited in size whether it be a small unit it may be a large unit all the units there is some limit to the size if you see earth as one unit it has a certain size if you see the sun as one unit that also has a certain size if you see an ant if you see a rock everything has a limited size it may be small it may be big but the unit is limited in size it is activity so there is activity going on so if you see within ourselves i am you know the consciousness that is one unit within me these activities of all this what we are talking about within us you know, desiring thinking all this is going on within us if you see um the earth is moving some activity is going on if you see the sun if you see say even a chair there is a chair there now you say this is not active but if you look at the microscopic level i mean we've all studied all that you know the electrons the protons there is some movement something is happening so there is activity in all the units and these units are all self organized there is a certain suddenly the chair doesn't fall apart i mean with wear and tear some changes will happen and eventually but it's not that you make a chair and suddenly it just collapses or um you you know that also you might you know that is something that we have made but if you look at you know nature if you look at already what is there you will find that like the earth is moving in a certain way now that is happening all the time from whenever you can go back to if you look at the sun if you look at the other planets you find that everything is you know doing their part in a very organized manner this is happening every day never does it happen that the sun is not there we say sun comes up comes up yani we see it that way but it never happens that suddenly today the earth will you know rotate in the other direction this is always happening in a very self organized way you look at the body in the body you know these processes of repair and all that is happening at night when we sleep this is happening on its own in a very self organized way we don't have to do anything in fact we just have to be sleeping and this is getting done so things are happening in an in an organized way then if we look and see every unit is energized being in space so it seems to have some energy we are constantly thinking feeling all these activities where are we getting the energy from all these big planets everything is moving where is the energy coming from and in science we try to you know say ultimately this is you know whatever in the atoms and the hydrogen and helium and blah 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 and all of that but ultimately if you come to the base to the root where is that energy coming from then we don't have an answer but something you know it every unit is energized being in space and every unit is recognizing its relationship and fulfilling the relationship with every other unit so you can see with the plants you can see with the trees you can see with the planets you can see there is a certain way 
that things keep happening. When the sun comes up, the leaves open up. If you plant a, a tree in the shade, a plant in the shade, it starts you know, tilting towards where the sun comes up. This is all recognition and fulfillment. This happens always in that manner. And it seems to happen automatically. Right? You don't have to do it physically for that. So you'll find that units are limited in size. There is activity. So units are activity. They are self-organized. They are energized being in space. And they recognize the relationship with every other unit and fulfill that relationship in a very definite manner. If you look at the space, the space is all pervading. It is there. It is there where the units are there. It is there where the units are not there. It is there everywhere. It's all pervading. And now, if you see, you know, the limitation, there is no limitation. No limit in time, no limit in space. Space is no activity. Within space, there are units where there is activity, but space by itself is no activity. And self-organization is available. Being in space, this self-organization is available to every unit. That's how they are self-organized. Space is energy in equilibrium. So it stays in that manner. And there is energy for all these units for their activities. And it is transparent. So being in space, every unit is reflected onto every other unit. And just by virtue of being in space and this reflection, every unit recognizes every other unit in the relationship and fulfills that relationship. This is how it is. If you look at the units, the units are of two types, the material and the consciousness. Material unit is temporary and it will go through that process of, you know, um, certain reactions are happening, something is happening and eventually, you know, the decomposition, the dying of the unit, and formation of something else and so on. This keeps happening in a cyclic kind of manner. And every unit has this recognition and fulfillment. And this is definite. When it comes to the consciousness unit, the consciousness unit is something that is continuous. It doesn't sort of, you know, like if you see in the case of the body, child is born, starts growing, the body grows, grows, becomes an elder person, eventually, you know, decomposition starts happening or deterioration starts happening in the body and eventually the body, there is death of the body. But if you look at the consciousness unit, it is continuous. It's not a temporary thing. It's there. It was there, it is there. And here, the recognition and fulfillment is based on our assumption or knowing. I won't go into that again because we already discussed that in some length. So now in the material units, you have the physical order. So in the physical order, you have all these, if you break it down, we've all read about this, atoms, molecules, and molecular structures are found lump, fluid, whatever you, you can, you know. Important thing is, this is all one part, the physical order. If you come to the plants, now in the plants, this is taking something from the physical order and this is being formed, the cells, then from the cells, you know, small plants and, or, you know, some organisms. Then you find that even in the animals and the human beings. What is happening is that the body part, the material part is coming from the same kind of thing. So it is similar to, or a more complex version of something that is there in the bio order. So that forms the animal body that also forms the human body. 
But in addition to that, there is now an adding on or an association of this body with the consciousness unit, the cell. So in the animal body, there is association with a self which makes it part of the animal order. In the human body, there is an association with the self which forms the human order. And like we discussed in nature, we can see that every other unit seems to be, you know, in harmony, seems to be having definite conduct, definite recognition and fulfillment. Problem only lies with the human order, particularly the human being, the self in the human being. The body has still got definite recognition and fulfillment because it's part of that bio order. But the consciousness, the self, here is the problem. If we don't have this, uh, you know, if we don't take guidance from the higher activities, we tend to be just having all this conflict within undecided. Sometimes we choose this, sometimes we choose that. It is indefinite. If I'm in a good mood, I may be, you know, polite and nice to the other person. If I'm in a bad mood, maybe I might even slap the other person. All this is very indefinite, right? So even in relationships, many people say, hey, you have to see the mood of my spouse before I can talk to her or him. Isn't it? So why this indefiniteness? Because this guidance from the lower activities is missing. So as we become conscious of these higher activities, we get to knowing or understanding. We are able to see this whole harmony. We are able to see space. We are able to see our relatedness. With all of that, now when I guide my lower activities, then this you know, recognition and fulfillment that was being based just on assumption without knowing can now be based on acceptance with knowing. So then that possibility of being definite is there. There can be, then the human being also can have that definiteness. So this development, this purple part, this part within the self is not cyclic. It is all linear. It doesn't reverse back. It stays with you. And with this, can we go to the next slide? Ultimately, you can have a tradition. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Next slide. This is the same thing in Hindi. Yeah. So, okay. So, ultimately, you can have this tradition where from one generation to the next, this process can be carried forward through education. So this transformation that is happening at your level, individual level, at our level, we work on it personally within ourselves. And then when we bring it into education, this is accessible to every child in education so that now every child has the possibility or is able to see that potential within them and work for it. Ultimately, the work has to happen within each individual, but at least that possibility is there. And with that personal transformation, then you can help somebody else also transform, eventually leading to a societal transformation. And this possibility can go on generation after generation because now the groundwork is done, that availability of that environment is there. And with that, the process, it snowballs. No? It becomes bigger and bigger. And ultimately, entire society has that, um, it becomes that way. So that transformation is possible from animal consciousness to human consciousness. It starts from within me myself. So this is, uh, you know, a lot to reflect on. And this transformation that is to happen within us, today we'll reflect on this, you know, our effort for this transformation that has to happen within us. 
and how it can lead to that um, unchanging in terms of our actions, in terms of our feeling and so on. And I'll mention it in the group. And tomorrow we'll uh, start with some questions based on this and then move on to exercise one.